This is a day I've been looking forward to and dreading at the same time. Sorry, God. I can't do this. It's a big no can do. Today is the first day of school, the 11th grade. I know that doesn't seem like such a big deal, but it is for me. See, my life has changed a little over the summer. The good side is, is that if I have to write an essay about what I did last summer, I've got an A-plus story to tell. But this story isn't just about me. It's also about all the people in my life who are important. But most of all, it's a story about hope and why you should never leave home without it. Hi. Hi. I uh, just wanted to make sure you heard the alarm. I'd like you to meet my mother. Yeah, I heard it. Okay. Mom is an assistant district attorney. I've heard she can be very scary in the courtroom. She's nicknamed the killer prosecutor. You'd like her if you met her, though, as long as you aren't a criminal. You might want to wake your sister up. I will. Beth. That's my sister, Beth. She's not what you'd call a morning person. In my opinion, she'd be fine in the morning if she didn't spend most of the night talking to and thinking about boys. Beth, I, uh, I heard Craig Buchanan has a crush on you. What? See what I mean? You know John! What's on my mind. You think you do, but Johnny! Breakfast, 20 minutes. Oh. My brother John, on the other hand, is definitely not a morning person. Now my sister Julie, she definitely is a morning person. Julie? Morning, Mommy. What are you doing, sweetheart? Homework. Homework? Yeah, it's for extra credit. <laughs> but Boogie, school hasn't even started yet. Today's the first day. I know, I thought I'd get a jump on the competition. Breakfast in 20 minutes. I'll be on time. Sweetheart, do they even have extra credit in the third grade? You never know. My parents sometimes wonder if Julie got switched with another baby at the hospital. Maybe somewhere right now, the real Julie is sleeping through her alarm clock like the rest of the family. My blue blouse! I cannot find my blue blouse! <laughs> Hey, sunshine. Hey, Dad. I just uh, want you to know I'm here if you need anything. Thanks. You need anything? Uh, not unless you know where Beth's blue blouse is. No, I'm useless there. Anything else? No, thanks. <sighs> useless. I'm starting out my day feeling useless. <laughs> That's my dad. He's a sports writer. He tends to change jobs a lot, though, because he's always getting mad at editors and telling them what they can do with their editing notes on his stories. Okay, I'll see you at breakfast. No, absolutely not. If we get Judge Warren, this guy will walk. Warren wants to be Judge Edo. He wants to be a TV star, take over for Judge Judy. No, Frank. His greatest desire I'm not going to be here until about 9.30. My kids start school today. Say. You'll have to understand that the thing my mom and dad love best is a good fight with a worthy opponent. Will you tell me how much you think it sucks on the phone if you want? Mom says the reason they fell in love was because they had never met a more worthy opponent than each other. What difference does it make if he was funny or not? You're missing my point. You're bringing it. I'm making him over easy, okay? I go back plate in the dishwasher, Mom. I understand. I understand. Why don't you just read it? Why didn't anybody wake me up? Yeah, right, right now. No, I didn't hear that. Fine, as if anybody cares what happens to me. No, I'm not going to have time for that today. What are you looking at? Somebody got up on the wrong side of the bed this morning. Julie, you're always going to be short. Mom, John said I'm always going to be short. Can you handle that, please? Uh, Julie, you're not going to be short. You're going to be tall. You're going to be very tall. Okay. I don't want to be very tall. Julie, you're not going to be very tall, okay? You're going to be just right. Thanks. See? See? Hey, John. 
Have you ever noticed you're pretty short yourself? <laughs> Mommy, I don't want to be late. Okay, it's only a quarter till. I should be there already, Mom. I want to get a desk right up front. All the best students sit there. Want me to put the pedal to the metal and run a few red lights? Yes, please. One. So, John, you good to go for the first day of school? Johnny? Yeah, sure. I remember what it was like back when we first moved here. A new school can be a scary place for a kid. For my sister Beth, it was terrifying. In those days, I ran everywhere I went. There it is, right there. I'll take her from here. Well, Anna, I think your classroom is down the hall. Two I'm in room 222. Don't worry, I know where it is. One of the hardest things for a kid is the first day at a new school. You don't know anyone, and you're absolutely sure that no one wants to be your friend. But I was lucky. I had Beth, and she had me. We always stuck together. Please stay with me, Anna. You don't need to be afraid, Beth. I mean, it's okay if you want to. I won't be embarrassed. How you doing, honey? Anna? Don't worry, Dad. I'm just fine. I'm doing okay, too, Dad. Oh, good, Beth. That's, that's great. My father, being a sports writer and all, felt I should be involved in sports. Well, the truth is, he felt the entire world should be involved in sports. But that's another story. He did this interview with Mary Lou Redden for Sports Illustrated and decided that gymnastics was the way to go. And um, I think that it's. I watched the other girls practicing and I couldn't imagine ever being able to do what they were doing. A year later, I began to believe I could be as good as some of the other girls. And one day. I was. It was a time in my life when it looked like everything was going my way. Every day was good and every tomorrow looked even better. Go for it, Anna! But there was once this great athlete who said, no one is promised tomorrow. It's funny, but what happened then I remember as if it were something I had dreamt. Have you ever had a dream where you can fly? In my dream, I could fly like a bird, like Superman. It was like being free, freer than you could ever imagine. If my dream had ended there, it would have been a wonderful dream. Then that boogeyman, gravity, stepped in and ruined the whole thing. Okay, you want me to help you inside? I got time. That's okay, Dad. I'll take her from here. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> what? Your sister said the same thing to me on your first day of school. Dad, you're so sentimental. Yeah. Except where the Clippers are concerned. I'm not feeling sentimental at all about the Clippers. Have a great day. Bye, Dad. We love you. Oh, and don't cry, Dad. Our friends will think you're gay or an actor. 
Oh, John. You have a great day, too. It's Dad I'm worried about most. I think if he could trade places with me, he would. It could be worse. What? What are you, what are you talking about? It could be worse. Uh, she has a compression fracture at T12, L1, resulting in a major contusion with partial lesion now. Dr. Halbert, neither of us needs to be handled with kid gloves, okay? Just give us the bottom line. We're going to do our best, but barring a miracle, your daughter may never walk again. awful yeah i mean it's awful to have to just sit here helpless like this i get another cup of coffee you want one how can you think about coffee at a time like this i need a cup of coffee all right i'll help you mommy You gotta try, sweetie. Hey, folks. Just try to tell me it's not a beautiful day. Just try. I am Tommy T. Tillman, and you must be Leslie Morgan. How do you do? Hi. And you're Rod Morgan. That's right. You know, you once wrote a column about me saying if I spend as much time working on my pass catching as I did on my end zone dance, I'd make it to the Hall of Fame. Tommy T. Tillman, Denver Broncos. What are you doing here? Well, I'm a counselor here. And it is my honor to have been selected to help Miss Anna here get to know her new vehicle. Oh, uh, she's not feeling up to that right now, Mr. Tillman. So you're not feeling quite up to it, huh? Well, I can help you with that. All right? Leslie, will you excuse us for a while, please? There's some things Miss Anna and I here need to talk about. Well, Tommy, I know you, I know you, you, you came to help out, but I, I just, I, I don't feel right about us leaving her right now when she's so down. Right. I appreciate how much you love your daughter. Both of you. Right now, that is the best thing this little girl's got going for her. But sometimes, Mama and Papa have to leave the nest so baby bird here can learn how to fly. Hard as it is. We'll be right down the hall, sweetheart. Everything's gonna be all right. Doesn't quite ring true, does it, sweetheart? What? That everything's gonna be all right. Doesn't feel like that right now, does it? No. Well, it just so happens that is true. 
And maybe things aren't going to be the way you want them to be, but they can be all right. I know this for a fact. What happened to you? The great American sport of football. Game against the Eagles. It wasn't the hardest I've been hit either. You know, just that I fell at just the right angle and it changed my life. And I felt exactly what you're feeling right now. I felt like quitting, like giving up. I was so angry. I decided when anybody that was gonna help me, maybe I couldn't get up and run out of this hospital, but I could throw a bedpan like John Elway could throw it down and out. <laughs> and then one day I'm laying there and I had what I like to call a moment of clarity. So, I buzzed the nurse. It took her about a half hour to even get up the courage to peek in on me. And then after that, I started trying. Yeah, just a little bit at first, you know, then a little bit more. Next one, I knew I had it. Had what? Hope. That is the greatest gift we can give ourselves. We've got to have it. And when we get good at giving it to ourselves, see, then we can give it away to other people. At least that's the opinion of yours truly, Tommy T. Tell me. <laughs> see, that is what I'm doing here, Anna. I'm going to give you some of my hope so you can learn to make your own. Now, we can do this tomorrow. We can do it the next day or the day after that. I'm a flexible kind of guy. Or we can do it today and just get on with it. So, what's up? What do you say? <laughs> Dad says he's doing fine, but sometimes I'm not so sure. Hey, Beth. Hey, hey. Um, listen, I'll be right back. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Yeah. Good. Oh, you know, I was hanging out, and I mean, I was, I was really busy. I was just doing a lot of stuff, and getting a lot of phone calls, you know, dates and stuff. But, huh, what can I do with a girl who's got a gym? Brad Kilmer. Oh, you're kidding me, right? I, I mean, Brad. Cute Brad. Basketball team. Blonde hair. A girl adorable. Oh, you mean the Brad that never gets in the game. That is so besides the point. Hi. Hey, Kyle. So, you're gonna get one night free from gymnastics so we can go to a movie or something? Uh, you know, like, real couples do. Uh, maybe Saturday? Definitely Saturday. And don't call and say you're staying late at practice. Greg has a crush on me. Hi, Anna. Oh, hey, Sheila. Uh, so, how was your summer? Hmm, rehab was great. How was your summer? Um, great. Fine. Um, listen, I'll catch you guys at lunch. Gotta go. Just one away. Greg was so Anna, I am so sorry you can't walk. Gotta run. I totally. I just really, really hope that. That girl is personally responsible for the worldwide proliferation of all blonde jokes. Proliferation? That's a good vocab. Oh, you like that, huh? How about this? Unilateral. Wow. 
But do you know what it means? Um, I think it has something to do with Papa. Hello. Uh, yes, this is Rod Morgan. I'm Anna's father. That's right. That's... Yes, hello, Miss Harcourt. It's nice to meet you, too, but I, I believe we have met before. Yes. Uh, listen, Miss Harcourt. Alice, thank you, Alice. Um, I'm just checking in. Is my daughter doing okay? Great. Great. Yes, of course. I'm sure you are. Uh-huh. Oh, yes, it's a... Uh, it's a very tough thing to, uh, to live through. Alice? Hey, Alice, you're breaking up here. Uh, yeah, I'm on my, I'm on my cell phone, and it's, I'm losing the connection. But, okay. Oh, okay, we'll, we'll talk. Thank you. Bye-bye. If your textbook is damaged, you must pay the full cost of your textbook. If your textbook is lost or stolen, you must pay the full cost of your textbook. You must treat your textbook as any other valuable piece of property. That's because it is, in fact, a valuable piece of property. To make things valuable worse, I had missed almost an entire year of school. The bad news was that I was repeating my junior year. The good news was that I had a couple of classes with Beth. And the other bad news was that they were really boring classes. Treat your textbook as if it were any other valuable piece of property. Are you all right, Miss Morgan? Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm hunky-dory, Mr. Bailey. Right as rain. I was just stretching my legs. Of course. You must get tired of sitting in that wheelchair day in and day out. Eh, it's not so bad. I mean, as long as I can take a break every now and then, you know? Go for a walk, take a run. It'd be pretty awful if I couldn't do that. I can imagine. No, you can't imagine, Mr. Bailey. You have no idea. Miss Morgan, are you all right? Miss Morgan. Um, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> You just let me know if you need anything, okay? Anything at all. Will you do that? Will you let me know if you need anything? You wouldn't happen to have an extra spinal cord handy, would you? Excuse me? It was a joke. Uh -huh. <laughs> that one always got a good laugh at rehab. Yes. Well, sense of humor is a wonderful thing to have. Yeah. Real lifesaver. So I bumped into him in study hall, and he said that he thought that she was cool, and she thinks that... Okay, anyways, I mean, she likes him, but he doesn't like her. <laughs> I mean, he likes her, but he doesn't like, like her. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're saying he doesn't like, like her. Exactly. Is she making fun of me? Of course not. Okay, anyways, so she thinks that he's gonna hook up with her at the dance. But I don't think that he is. Although when I'm talking to her, you know, I try to be positive. Because I think a person should always be, you know, positive. So, Beth, what are you going to wear to the dance? I don't think I'm going. You're just not going to go. How could you just not go? You're going, right, Anna? I mean, um, you think that, uh, she should go, don't you, Anna? <sighs> um, I gotta go. <laughs> no, Sheila's not insensitive on purpose. It just comes to her naturally. I think she's right. Wait, what do you mean? Well, I think you should go to the dance. Maybe I don't want to. Oh, you want to? You just don't want to hurt my feelings. Hi. Hi. So you're going to the dance on Friday? Uh, yeah, um, I don't know. Why do you ask? Maybe we could go okay. together? Okay. Okay. It's, uh, it's been good talking to you. 
<laughs> okay, seriously, did I come off like a complete idiot? Not a complete idiot. It's okay though, I don't really think he noticed. I swore to myself I wasn't gonna go to that dance. I thought that maybe we could rent videos and eat junk food. Talk about how awful boys are, every single one of them. Look, it's okay. I, I could have done it too. I mean, it was any boy except Craig. Why did it have to be Craig? Destiny. Think? I didn't say it was a good destiny. He could be a total jerk. Like Kyle. Yeah, Kyle's just afraid. You must be like the best person on the entire planet if you don't think Kyle's a jerk. I think he's a jerk. I just think that part of the reason he's such a jerk is because he's so afraid. The other reasons he can burn in hell for. Well, I mean, if Craig's a jerk, I hope he's a nice jerk. Well, I mean, he's so good-looking that if he's a nice jerk instead of a mean jerk, it would be okay dating a jerk through high school. I mean, lots of girls date jerks in high school. And then, well, they become adults and go to therapy. You watch way too much sex in the city. I identify with all those women. Ah, except for the one in the leather and chains. Oh, you can always look at the positive side. Craig could be the man of your dreams. Huh? A miracle could happen. Hi, uh, this is Leslie Morgan. I'm Anna... Oh, hello, Mrs. Harcourt. I was just checking to see how if... Oh, he did. Well, I guess we're both a little anxious. Not that there's really anything to worry about. It's just I wanted to make sure you had all my phone numbers in case something happens or my husband forgets to pick her up. Not that he would. He's a good father, I... No. No, no, I, I don't need to talk to her. Yes, I'm sure you could. I... Listen, um, that's another call coming through. I am going to have to take that call. But thank you for all of your help, Mrs. Harcourt. <sighs> Sorry. How's it going? Fine. It's going just fine. So, how was your day? Why are you always prying in my private life? Well, son, I was talking to your sister. Oh. Um, my day was fine. Um, I had a good day, too, Dad. And I was just about to ask that. Really? Hello? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I just got in it. Oh, here she is now. A uh, boy named Craig for you? I'll get in my room. Oh, sweetie, how was school? Uh, fine, I'll be in my room. What'd she say in the car? I want to know her exact words. <laughs> Why do women always have to know the exact words? What's wrong with paraphrasing? Because we're more exacting than men. Smarter, wiser, more important to the planet. Oh, well, since you put it that way, I believe her exact words when I asked her about her day were, it was fine. No, Beth, I am hanging up. I couldn't care less about listening in on your phone conversation. I need to find out who that boy is. That's all she said, fine? It was fine. That's two words more than you got out of her, even though, as a male, I am less important to the planet. And you let her get away with that all the way home. That's right. Well, I am her mother and an experienced prosecutor. She'll talk to me. Well, try not to hit her with the phone book, OK? Because her counselor says that that could be bad for her self-esteem. How's it going, pal? Leave me alone, please. That is so cool. I would never know how to do that. Maybe you could teach me. Really? I, I would love to. Hi. 
So, how did it really go? Just between us girls. So, how was her day? Fine. We shouldn't push her. She'll talk when she's ready. How do you memorize all those football plays? You are so smart. Oh, Greg, that is so cool. You could play a little hard to get. I thought I was. Well, try harder. Oh, oh, wait, um, uh, that guy, Tommy, called from the hospital. He says he wants to meet you at school or something. Really? Why? I don't know. <laughs> Craig, that is so cool. He's talking about his car. His parents are gonna get him. I mean, all I have to do is say cool every few minutes, and he thinks we're having a conversation. Well, could you get off the phone so I can call Tommy back? In a minute. I mean, surely he's almost done. How much can you say about a stupid car? Uh-huh. Oh, Craig, that is so cool. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. Uh, crime scene photos, sorry. Les, hmm? do you think Johnny's using drugs? What? Well, he sleeps all the time. He's, he's completely disconnected. I was just wondering, I mean, what if he's using drugs? You think he's doing drugs? Well, I mean, maybe he's just not getting enough sleep. Oh, isn't that what those parents say in all those interviews after their kid gets arrested? Oh, we had no idea. We just thought little Billy wasn't getting enough sleep. They're just speculating. What are you doing? I'm going to search his room. Well, we can't search his room. Yes, we can. But he'll think we don't trust him. He's 13. Do you trust him? Well, no, but I don't want him to know that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay, we will search when he's not here. What do you mean, like a covert operation? Well, this isn't the criminal justice system we're dealing with here. Rod, this is your son. If we don't find any drugs, then we trust him again. It's a mind-easing investigation to restore the fragile, loving bond of parent-child trust. I like the sound of that better. I grew up during the Nixon administration. Okay. We search tomorrow. You know, maybe he's not getting enough sleep. Oh, make it stop. Sorry. I just can't do it again today. Who are you talking to? God. Mm. Cool. Tell him I can't do it either. What are you doing? Nothing. Looks like you're reciting something. What is it? A poem? No, it's my book report. I have to give it in front of the class today. Oh. What kind of book report? Just tell what the book was about, that's all. I decided to write mine out, too. And memorize it? Yeah, I wanted to make sure I get an A+. Plus. How about just an A? An A+. Plus. Why an A+. Plus? Mom, I don't have time for a conversation right now. doing? What does it look like I'm doing? Looks like you're photographing a crime scene. You are photographing a crime scene, aren't you? We need before pictures. Why? So we could put everything back exactly the way we found it. Have you done this sort of thing before? No. Not a lot. Are you sure you want to turn your math sheet in with Craig Doodle all over it? What? I mean, I know this thing for Craig isn't like true love or anything. Uh-huh. 
It's more like a, a addiction, obsession, psychosis. I was thinking crush. Same thing. Crush sounds better. Puppy love makes me feel like I'm six years old. OK, fine. Stick with crush, then. I mean, crushes are acceptable at our age. Just don't have his crushed child. I feel bad talking to you about this. Why? It's not like no one will ever love me, you know? Well, maybe you'd meet somebody at the dance. Beth, it's a dance. I mean, people go there to dance. I think boys don't really take me for the dancing type anymore. I'm sorry. Sometimes I guess I'm not as OK with it as I think I am. But hey, it's OK that you can walk. It's OK that you can dance. It's even OK if you get a better grade on this math test, although I think the chances of that are pretty remote at this point. Oh, too late. See ya. What's this? What do you got? I think it could be cigarette paper. It's a post-it. Rolling grass and post-its? Why didn't I think of that when I was in college? Because they didn't have post-its when you were in college. My parents are stupid. You think that's the drugs talking? I doubt it. He's always thought we were stupid. Right. So what do you think? Inconclusive. OK, honey, that's it. Everything looks exactly the way we found it. Mm. Those sweat socks over there, move them about a half inch, well, inch and a half to the left. <laughs> You're kidding. OK. OK? Mm. Yeah, OK. I think we're OK. You know, you could have made a great spy. I've been told that. Or a thief. I'm going back to work. Yeah, me too. Christmas present. A what? This is your first step towards racing. No way. What? I'm not racing. Why not? Because I don't want to. That's why not. I thought you were going to live your life. I am living my life. I mean, I'm going to school. Look, you don't have to worry about me, OK? I'm a very high achiever. Just try it. Oh. oh, girl, just try it one time. I don't want to, OK? I have a lot on my plate right now. Tommy, I appreciate what you're trying to do for me here, but. I'll be here again tomorrow this time. You decide to give it a shot, you'll be here too. Fair enough? Fair enough. Anna, you've done great. You have really done great so far. Thanks. But the thing about living life to its fullest is that the more you become, the more you realize you can become. I thought all football players were supposed to be dumb. <laughs> oh, baby, I'm dumb as a brick. Didn't you know that? Right. Well, maybe I'll be here tomorrow. OK. Maybe I won't. <laughs> maybe you will. Oh, I've decided that I'm going to the dance. Huh? Really? When did you decide this? During the last 15 minutes of math class, I was there done with my test, and everyone else was still grinding it out, and I realized that I needed more of a life. I mean, if I'm so understanding about why no boy is interested in me, I shouldn't not go to the dance because no boy is interested in me. You, um... You lost me at if I'm so understanding. 
it's all right. I'm not entirely clear on it myself. Let's just say that I decided to go, so I'm going. Wow. You're so decisive, you should be like a judge or something. Or a dictator. An empress conqueror in a wheelchair. Mm. Anna the Hun. Anna the Nun. Anna the Hun Nun. Wow. Anna, you had the best attitude for a girl whose life is just so terrible. <laughs> Did I say something funny? I don't normally say something funny. Anna's going to the school dance this weekend. Beth. What? Wasn't a secret, was it? That's great, honey. You know, that really takes a lot of... Dad, just don't make a big deal about this, okay? Okay, you got it. It's no big deal. It's a regular deal. No problem. Cool, that's awesome. I'm, I'm gonna read it tonight. I told you that before I left the office. Okay. Oh, okay, Walter. I'll see you in the morning. Goodbye. So, how'd the book report go? Can you use the phone for a while, okay? Oh, uh, Dad, when you tell Mom about the dance, just tell her not to make a big deal out of it, okay? <laughs> you got it, kid. Hey, John, want to help me make dinner? Going to the dance? Didn't Dad tell you not to make a big deal about this? Yes, but you know I don't listen to him. Maybe you should try it sometime. Maybe when we're old. So, you're going. You sure this is a good idea? I mean, you should do this kind of thing eventually, but maybe this is pushing things a little too fast. I, I, I don't know. What do you think? I think that I'm going to the dance. It's not that big of a deal. Okay, then. Go. You know, this is just the corny reaction I was trying to avoid. I can't help it. You know, Dad didn't hug me. He just gave me a pat and a wink, and he really wanted to hug me, I could tell. Your father's stronger than I am. You tell him I said that, you die. You have a talk with her? Wouldn't exactly call it a talk. She wants to go to the dance. I hope she's ready for this. What if she's not? She'll survive. She survived worse, right? Yeah. Right. Uh-huh. Why don't the kids talk to me? What do you mean? They talk to you. John won't talk to me. <laughs> John won't talk to anybody. Beth doesn't talk to me. Beth only talks to the boys. If you were Justin Timberlake, she'd be talking your ear off. Anna talks, if you want to call it that. I've had more in-depth communication with answering machines. I mean, she doesn't exactly open up to me about what's really going on with her. And something is bothering Julie. She won't talk to me. Is it me? Yeah, they're kids. They go through things. <laughs> Isn't really an answer to my question, is it? What about you? 
Me? We don't talk. Oh. Not the way we used to. Yeah, honey, we have been kind of busy, and, and, and there have been a lot of adjustments to make with Anna and all that. You remember when we first fell in love? Couldn't get enough of talking to each other. <laughs> we would fight for hours and hours. It was wonderful. You know what we're going to do? When things settle down around here, we're going to go away, just the two of us. And I promise you, we will fight all we can long. Promise. Maria. I promise. Everything's going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. That's what I used to think. my room no we didn't yes we did <coughs> yes we did why because we were afraid you might be using drugs why didn't you just ask me why didn't you just ask him what you were the <sighs> well are you using drugs what difference would it make if I said no you, you guys wouldn't believe me would you why don't you just figure it out why don't you search my locker at school or the spare tire of Dad's car. Who knows where a druggie keeps his stash? We made a mistake. I agree. His room was way too obvious. I'm gonna go to school, check his locker first thing in the morning. No, you're not, Leslie. He's our son. We're gonna trust him. You're right. I mean... No, you're right. At least check the spare tire. The spare tire, and that's it. Why don't they tell you raising kids is so hard? Because if people knew that before they had kids, the human race would become extinct. sleep on the phone. Well, I'm sure it wasn't anything personal. No, I, I mean, I think he sleeps a lot. I wonder if that's a trait in boys that are dense. I was thinking shallow. Yeah, well, I think you should go to sleep. You can figure that out in the morning. Do you think Craig and I will get married? You haven't even had your first date yet. I think it may be a little too soon to tell. Come on, make believe with me. I need a story to think about while falling asleep. You must be really good at this when we were little. Yeah, well, I've lost my touch. I'll do it for you. <sighs> okay. Okay. Do you want the crystal ball or Great Chief knows it all? Crystal ball. I, the Great Anna Pajana will look into my crystal ball. Yes, I see you. You are at the dance. You look marvelous, my dear. Good start. You are alone. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, wait, no, there he is. It's Craig. He's looking for you. 
Oh, wait, no, he's looking for food. <laughs> oh, okay, now he's looking for you. He sees you. You see him. Your eyes meet. You are walking across the room towards each other. What's this? You're surprised to find out that he's just as nervous as you are. Cool, detached, macho thing is just a facade. Oh, my goodness. This is a surprise. What? It turns out he's really very deep and in touch with his feelings. Oh, come on, Anna. Make it a little believable. Okay, you dance, you sweat like pigs, and uh, it turns out that he's not quite as shallow as a bottle cap. Come on, it's getting late. Can I have a fantasy, please? <sighs> All right, um... I see you dancing with him. It's a slow song. And as you dance, you realize that he is the one. You look at him. He looks at you. But before you can say he's the one, he says, Beth, you're the one. It's, it's magic. It's kismet. It's Oprah. And this is great. I mean, I have no idea what kismet means, but it's great. Then what? Then you date all the way through high school and college, and he graduates from medical school, you graduate from law school, uh, second in your class, just barely edged out by me, and then you get married, and you go off on your honeymoon to the Bahamas, and then... Then what? Then... you both die. Oh, Anna, come on. What? It's the perfect ending. Your life is peaked and you're just 25. You know, it'd be all downhill after that. Oh, come on. Okay. Everything's the same through the Bahamas part, and then you live happily ever after. That's better. Thank you. My pleasure. I like the Bahamas part. That's what I'm gonna dream about. Do I ever walk again? What'd you say? Go to sleep. You have like a whole decade of your life to cover before morning. Good night. Good night. Can I have this dance? don't have to do this. Everyone would understand. I'll just stay in my room for the rest of my life and write poetry like Emily Dickinson. All right. One more day and that's it. I mean it. God again? Yeah. No, I'm not gonna have time for that today. Why don't you just read it to me? Yeah, right, right now. You all right, sweetie? You look tired. 
Do you sleep okay? Yeah, Mom, I'm fine. No, she, she slept great, I promise. Uh, no, I didn't hear that. Anybody want more pancakes? Why do I always make so many pancakes? Fine, eat without me. You want to sleep with a criminal, right? Want some pancakes? <sighs> What's happening to everybody? Life, Dad. Life is happening to us all. Found his stash. It's not drugs. This is what's keeping him up late at night. Little women? He's addicted to chick flicks? Uh, this isn't little women. This is big women with and men with if he he switched the labels. <sighs> Remember Jaws? You thought the shark was scary? Did you watch them all? No, not all of them. Well, not all of each one of them. I did what I had to do. Oh, this is a relief. I mean, it beats the pants off heroin. <laughs> no pun intended. Well, still, I'll put it back exactly where it was, so it'll be better for when we confront him. I'll talk to him. Oh. Well, what are you going to say? I don't know. Well, you don't have to tell me every exact word, but just give me the gist of it. I don't know the gist yet. Oh. Well, when you... Figure it out. You'll just run it by me before you talk to him. Honey, I'm perfectly capable of being a good father. Well, why are you taking this so personally? Because I think you meant it personally. I, I'm still his mother. I have the right well, to... Leslie, I'll handle it, okay? Okay. <sighs> Covering a game by watching it on TV? The best seat in the house.
I gotta go. Uh, home? No, to the bathroom. Oh, okay. Do you have to go? No. Okay. Okay. Um, am I sweating too much? Oh, no, your sweat level's just perfect, you know, sexy without being disgusting. Craig, on the other hand. Yeah, it is amazing how much water guys can sweat off and still have to go to the bathroom. So, how's it going? He's very good looking. He sure is. And good looking is important, especially when you're young and, well, I'm young. So what's wrong? Oh, nothing. Nothing important. Is he not nice to you? Oh, no, 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 he, he's nice. I mean, whenever he has to go to the bathroom, he asks me if I need to go to the bathroom. He's very attentive to my bladder. Oh, well, that's good. It's not often nowadays that you find a guy who pays enough attention to a girl's bodily functions. Right. So, what's wrong? He's... Well, he's, um... Boring? Garden snails are much more interesting. Maybe he's just nervous. I mean, first date and all. And that's what I figured and... That's what I was hoping for and... Well, then... Then... I fell asleep during a slow song. You fell asleep? Well, I mean, not, not totally asleep. He kind of sagged a little and then was snoring. Maybe he has sinus trouble. I asked, said no. I was catching a little shut eye, a little cat nap. Stay loose. <laughs> See, athletes need to stay loose so that he's develop a talent that he can sleep standing up like a horse, anytime, anywhere. Seem very proud of this. Oh, he's very good looking. It's your fault, you know. What? I mean, if I wasn't your sister, I would have grown up shallow like God intended me to be. I'd be happy as a pig and all sweat right now. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I forgive you. Hey, how's it going? Hey, well, uh, that was quick. I didn't have to go after all. False alarm. <laughs> Better safe than sorry. Right. <laughs> You want to dance more? Sure. I sure wish I'd play slow. <laughs> Need to catch a little shut eye. You guys have been talking about me, right? Cool. Hey, is that real? What? A wheelchair. Is it? Is it real, or are you just screwing around? I've got this bro. His name's Brad. Bro, Brad. Sometimes we take his grandfather's wheelchair out and we mess around with it. Ah. Oh. Well, this one's all mine. Oh. Cool. Hey, slow song. Come on, let's go get some rest. John. Hey, John. John, don't let me bother you, okay? I'm just gonna pick out a tape to watch tonight. What are you doing, Dad? Oh. Is this yours? I don't know. I... Oh, little women. You know, I don't think your mom has ever seen this. Maybe we could watch this one tonight, okay? Hey, in fact, let's watch it together. It's gotta be PG. Yeah, sure. Cool. I'll tell your mom and your sisters. No, Dad, wait. I just remembered. I was watching with some of the guys, and I spilled Coke on it. You know what? It probably wouldn't even play. It'd probably ruin the VCR. You know, this tape is completely no good. Well, too bad. Yeah, it's too bad. You know, you could probably run it, though. Yeah. Yeah, I probably could. Hey, we haven't watched Star Wars in a long time. Let's watch that one instead, okay? No, no. No? Well, let me guess. You and the guys spill Coke in this one, too? As a matter of fact... I find it kind of odd that you and the guys have been watching Little Women. So you want to take a shot at being straight with me, son? I don't know what you mean. Okay. Why don't you start by telling me what these really are? <sighs> They're 
Mm-hmm. Porn film? Right. Okay, so, uh... This is what's been keeping you up at night, huh? Not drugs. I don't do drugs. And I'm glad about that, son, really. I am. Listen, I was just curious, you know? Well, of course you were. And that's... <laughs> totally normal. Look, John, it's, it's one of the, one of the good things that, that God has given us, and it's, it's very, very good. But especially when it's an expression of love, you know, or uh, intimacy between people. You know what I'm trying to say is you're young and you're 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 curious and that's that that's all cool but there's just so much to learn about life. There is so much to learn. Dad? Yeah. Are you okay? Huh? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm, okay. I'm trying to tell you something, all right? I'm just I don't want you growing up without knowing what's important. I mean, really, really important in life. And, 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 and it's, that's tough because it's, it's just hard to know what the right thing is. John, am I a good dad? What? Do you think I'm a good dad? Well, yeah, sure. Okay, good, cool, cool. It's just... You know what? I just want you to get rid of these tapes, okay? Will you do that for me? Yeah, sure. I'll get rid of them. Good. And, uh, this room is a mess, man. I want you to clean it up, okay? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll clean it up. Good. Get out, son. You know, Dad. Organizing. I have my pens and pencils according to type. I have my ball points, my roller balls, my felt tips, my number two pencils, my color pencils, and of course my crayons, but I can't find periwinkle. Oh, oh, it's okay, sweetheart. No, it's not okay. Oh, I can't find periwinkle. What's really the matter, Julie? I don't want to be any trouble. But you're not any trouble. Yes, I am. You need your strength to take care of Anna. Anna almost died. Now she can't walk, and you have to help her, and I promised I'd help you. But you do help me all the time. And I don't tell you thank you enough. Not nearly enough. But I see what you do. You are a big help to mommy. I am. Yes, you are. You are the best daughter a mommy could ever hope for. I didn't make any plus. You don't have to make A pluses. Not for me. I love you exactly the way you are. I always will. <sighs> now listen to me. This weekend, I want you to just play. No studying. Not even a little no. study. No. Just play. Tomorrow I want you to pick something you want to do for the two of us to do together. I do want to play Play-Doh here. Well then, Play Doh, here it is. Can we cook? I mean, real cooking. I'm gonna make pancakes. Okay, pancakes. I love you, mommy. I love you too. I love you so much.
Vicky, are you sick? No, I'm paralyzed. Uh, what I meant was, you looked like you were dizzy or stoned or something. No, I'm, I'm fine. I mean, except for the whole paralyzed thing. <laughs> okay. Good, uh, because if you were feeling sick, I'm trained in first aid and CPR. Although it didn't look like you needed CPR or mouth to mouth or anything. <laughs> mouth to mouth, huh? Uh, it was a joke. Uh, actually, it was a really feeble attempt at a joke. Um, okay, I'm Neil. Um, I'm new at school, and I don't really know anybody yet, so I thought I would come to the school dance and try and meet some new people, but I guess I didn't really think it through, because if kids in class didn't want to meet the new guy, then why would they change their minds just because loud music is playing, right? So, uh, so I've been standing around all night trying to act like I don't really care, and I've been watching you standing, uh, sitting, sitting, <laughs> um, around all night doing the same thing, so... I decided to risk complete humiliation and come over and introduce myself. That's when I came up with that stupid line, hey, are you sick? <laughs> because if I was lucky and you were sick, then I would know exactly what to do, and you'd be impressed um, if you survived. But, but you weren't sick, and you were actually a lot funnier than me with that no, I'm paralyzed comeback, which I know wasn't technically a joke, but it does show you have a very cool sense of humor. Do you always talk this much? Actually, I'm really shy, and I almost never talk. <laughs> I just kind of save it up until I burst or something. <laughs> Well, you're funny. Thank you. Not everyone gets my sense of humor. I, I haven't, as they say, found my audience yet. I'm not related to Neil Simon, by the way. Um, I think my parents named me after Neil Armstrong. He's really smart, but not especially funny. <laughs> you must be tired from talking so much. <laughs> Why don't you pull up a chair? Sure, if you're sitting. <laughs> my jokes are dying. <laughs> no, that, that, that was a good one. You didn't laugh. Hey, it was a good one, not a great one. Yeah. yeah. It was actually a lot like the jokes we used to make in the hospital. You always had a very dark sense of humor. Yeah, I know. I do. Uh, my uncle was wounded in Vietnam, and he's in a wheelchair. He makes jokes like that all the time. I mean, everybody in the family gets embarrassed except for me. He and I are the only funny ones in the family. You ever want to see something that's not funny? Come to my family's Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, I'm Anna. Anna Morgan. Neil. Neil Kennedy. No relation to them either, in case. Yeah. <laughs> well, congratulations, Neil. <laughs> For what? Well, you succeeded. You came to a dance alone and made a friend. So why did you come? <sighs> I don't know. Maybe I was hoping to make a friend, too. Well, then I guess that makes us a couple of success stories. Time Magazine should be calling any minute. <laughs> No time to think What will be Feeling complete Don't wait for me To fall I'm on solid ground High above the disbelief I've been tied around Maybe another day My old How was it? And please don't just say fine. I'm not the cops. Pretend like I'm just your mom. Remember when we used to talk about things? Yeah, I remember. I made hot chocolate. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, actually, I, uh, I, I did meet a guy tonight. His name is Neil, like Neil Simon, but no relation. <laughs> so we talked. <laughs> I told Mom about the party, and about Neil, and about how worried I had really felt about going to the dance. It was a really nice talk. It was the way we talked before my accident, before everything changed. I wish she? She's good. How are you? I'm good. <sighs> How are you? 
Fine. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good night. So, you gonna tell me who that was? Maybe later. We'll see. Craig said I was the one. Really? When? Well, he was kind of quiet walking to the car. But then he suddenly perked up on the ride home. He looked in my eyes, and I looked into his eyes, and he said, Beth, you're the girl for me. I looked him into his heavy-lidded eyes, and I said, Craig, you're not the boy for me. <laughs> <laughs> no. Then what did he say? I mean, he just seemed disappointed for like a second or two, and then he's like, you want to eat? And after two cheeseburgers, he seemed OK. Well, the right one will come along for you, too. Yeah, I know. I met a guy tonight. Really? Yeah, his name is Neil. Ah, is he cute? Yeah, well, he's no Kyle. <laughs> Thank, Thank God. God. Is he the one? <laughs> no. I mean, I, I doubt it. Beth, you do realize that we are a little too young for the one. I don't know, but it's fun looking, though. When I told Mom about Neil, she basically told me not to get my hopes up. I mean, she didn't say it right out, but I knew what she was getting at. And I understand why she felt like she needed to say it. I mean, she didn't want me to be disappointed. Yep, sounds like Mom. I mean, really, though, is a little disappointment all that bad? It's just part of life. Yeah, I guess it is. Good night, Anna. Good night, Beth. I say, you can't let a little disappointment get you down. I say, keep your hopes as high as you can. After all, hope is what keeps us going. <laughs>